Hi, my name is Ed Loftus. I'm a gastroenterologist specializing in the care of people with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. I work at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And I wanted to talk to you today about two articles that were in the July 2015 issue of Gastroenterology. And this is a hot topic. The topic is fecal microbial transplantation for ulcerative colitis. So this is also known as a stool transplant. And so the idea is that maybe the problem in ulcerative colitis isn't just aberrations in the immune system. Maybe there's a different makeup of bacteria in the colon in patients with ulcerative colitis. And maybe by altering that makeup of bacteria, we could actually treat inflammatory bowel disease. So there were two articles that came to very different conclusions. The first trial, the one that probably got the most press, was a trial that ha actually had been presented the year before at one of our big GI conferences called Digestive Disease Week. And this was a trial out of Canada, and they enrolled 75 patients with ulcerative colitis, and they were treated with either a placebo enema or a fecal enema. So they were actually getting a stool donor uh, to provide stool, and they would uh, blend these enemas, and then they would go ahead and administer them via the rectum, and they would do this once weekly for six weeks, and at the end of the trial, at seven weeks, they reassessed the patients. And to meet the endpoint in that trial, you had to have a Mayo score, which is a combination of clinical features like stool frequency, rectal bleeding, the physician's assessment, and the endoscopy score. The total Mayo score had to be less than two, and the endoscopic subscore had to be zero. So this was a very, very rigorous definition of remission. And at the end of the trial, 24% of the patients who received the fecal transplant had met that endpoint versus only 5% in the placebo treated patients. And so that was statistically significant. Now the puzzling thing was that the year before when this trial was originally presented at a meeting, they it was billed as a negative trial. What happened was that they stopped the trial early based on an inner analysis, but then when by the time they completed the trial for the patients who had already entered the study but they didn't have the results when they presented it at the national meeting, it turned out to be a positive study after all, even though they thought initially it was a negative study. And the interesting thing was the vast majority of patients who achieved remission all had the same stool donor, the uh, donor B. And Donor B's stool apparently was much more valuable than the stool of the other donors uh, because remission wasn't achieved as often in those patients. Now the other trial presented in the same issue of gastroenterology came out of the Netherlands. They recruited uh, roughly 50 patients and they had a slightly different definition of remission. They used a, an index called the Simple uh, Clinical Colitis Activity Index and the, the, the criteria weren't quite as rigorous. And they actually administered the fecal transplant a different way. They actually put a tube down the nose, through the esophagus, through the stomach, into the duodenum, and they infused the fecal transplant twice, at week zero and week three, through this nasoduodenal tube. And then they assessed the patients at week 12. And they were not able to see a significant difference between the patients who received the transplant in the patients who received placebo and they concluded that fecal transplant was not effective. And so we're not sure why these studies came to two very different conclusions. Was it because uh, we were giving the enema through the fecal route and giving it more frequently? Is there something about giving it the duodenal route that doesn't work as well? Maybe some of the bacteria are degraded by the intestine, uh, by, you know, acid and whatnot before it reaches the colon? Or was it just not given as frequently? Was it because of differences in the study endpoints? Because there were slightly diff different uh, uh, definitions of remission. Anyway, all of this is very intriguing, but the bottom line is that the jury is still out on whether fecal transplant really works in ulcerative colitis, and I would encourage
uh, anyone who's thinking about doing this, because I know there are people who are doing this by themselves based on what they read on the internet, I would encourage you instead to find a place that is doing a clinical trial and enter a clinical trial for FMT so that we can actually come up with a definitive answer on this very important point. Thanks a lot.